Hello everyone, this is Doug, and in this lesson we are going to talk about the other representation of organic molecules that is pretty much the one that you see everywhere for organic chemistry. That's the one with all the zigzags and some atoms coming off of it. Um, this is called the line bond drawing, sometimes called the, the bond line or the skeletal or the zigzag. It has a lot of different names, but um, this is the one we're going to talk about in this video. Hopefully you watch the other representations in the first video, but I'll, I'll review them for you real quick here. All right, so remember that the molecular formula is just... Um, what atoms there are, right? So say we're going to take butane, for example, C4H10. That would be the molecular form for butane. And now there's different ways I could assemble those atoms, but um, it just tells you, right, what types of elements are there and how many of each there are. Not that much information. Whereas if you go to the Lewis structure, we get a little more information, right? The Lewis structure actually draw things out. So say we were, whoops, say we were talking about just normal butane here. So N-butane, normal butane. And my students, you don't need to know what, what butane looks like, but I'm going to draw it out for you. That would be, right, with the Lewis structure, you show out all of the atoms and all of the bonds. So I draw all of butane here, and you can see already, right, that it, it kind of takes a little while to draw that out. It takes a while to draw out the actual Lewis structure, but if you have all, the, all, the, all of those connections, you know exactly what molecule you're talking about. There's no ambiguity anymore in a formula, in a formula like C4H10. Now, when you go to the condensed, condensed structural formula, right, that's, what you, that's when you say what elements, what atoms are in each of the, each chunk. And by chunk, I mean things connecting the middle pieces. So in this case, I only have carbons as middle pieces. So the uh, condensed structural formula for this would be a carbon with uh, three hydrogens in the first chunk, a carbon with two hydrogens in the next chunk, and then I have a carbon with two more hydrogens, and then a carbon with three more hydrogens. And so that would be the condensed structural formula. Gives um, roughly amount, the same amount of information as a Lewis structure, but it's just a little bit easier to write. You see it a lot in textbooks, online, etc. Now this last one, right? So these three were talked about in part one of these representations videos. The last one is the line bond drawing, also known as the skeletal, like I said, zigzag. I've heard it called the ultimate structural bond drawing. It has all kinds of names, but you'll recognize it because it's the one that is just looks like that. It's just zigs and zags. And so drawing butane, right, all of these, all four of these representations, these are all butane. But it's much easier. You just have to just go zigzag. It looks like a lightning bolt. But this is supposed to mean the exact same thing as what's in this condensed structural formula and the exact same thing that's in this Lewis structure. And so what you'll notice here, right, so what you do with the line bond drawings is that every end, every end and every bend is a carbon is a carbon atom. So all of these bends and ends are carbon atoms. And the other rule when you do the line bond drawings is you do not draw CHs anymore, typically. So do not draw any more CH bonds. So just CH bonds. And that's because, right, there are so many hydrogen carbon bonds in organic molecules. They're loaded. They're everywhere. Um, this does not mean that you skip out on OH bonds or NH bonds or something other than carbon. So I'll just put as a, as a note, do draw, so do draw um, OH bonds, uh, NH bonds, HS bonds, you know, anything that's on a hydrogen on, not a carbon. So it's just the CHs that we tend not to draw. And so this zigzag, again, means CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. So this is supposed to be, I'll do this in a different color here. This is supposed to be a carbon because it's at an end. This is a carbon because it's at a bend. A carbon at a bend and a carbon at an end. So those are my four carbons, right? My one, two, three, four carbons. And then the H's are supposed to be implied because carbons have four bonds. So it must be that all of the other bonds that that carbon has are the H's that I just didn't draw. So if I look at carbon one here, if I look at carbon one here, I see one line drawn, one bond, that's the carbon number two. So that must mean to get up to four, I have to have one, two, three. I need to have three hydrogens on there to get up to four uh, bonds. And sure enough, three hydrogens here, three hydrogens on carbon number one. Then carbon number two has two bonds, two lines drawn from it, right? Carbon two is attached to carbon one and is attached to carbon three. So that must mean that it just needs two more bonds to get up to four. So carbon two has, um, it looks like a four. Carbon two has two hydrogens on it, as does uh, carbon three. And then lastly, carbon four 
has three hydrogens on it. Again, because carbons always have four bonds unless they have some sort of charge on them. So let's look at some examples. So what I want to do for these is I just want to draw these out into um, Lewis structures. So I'm going to take these zigzag drawings and kind of translate them backwards into Lewis structures just to make sure that we're understanding all of these zigs and these zags. So what I highly recommend that you do is just number your carbons so you can keep track of them. So it looks like I have five carbons in a row and then I have one carbon coming off of carbon two and one carbon coming off of carbon four. So if I want to draw this as a Lewis structure, for example, I have carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, and carbon number five. And I'll even label these as one, two, three, four, and five. So that's a three. And then I'm going to add all of the extras that were on here, right? I'm going to add all these extra pieces that I saw. So it looks like on carbon number two, I have one carbon up here, right? This is a carbon. So on carbon number two, I'm going to have a carbon coming off. Looks like carbon three is double bonded to four, so I'll draw an extra bond there. And carbon number four has a carbon coming off of it. Carbon number five looks like it's just on the end. So here's my carbon skeleton for these pieces. And then again, the idea here, right, is that I'm going to simply add hydrogens so that all of the carbons have four bonds in the end, right? If carbons have four bonds, so all of these things that I didn't draw must be hydrogens, otherwise I, would have, otherwise I would have drawn them, like for example the bromine over here on the right. So if I look at carbon number one, it only has one of its bonds, so it must need three, four, sorry, sorry, one, two, three, four. So it must have three hydrogens on here. Carbon number two has one, two, three of its bonds already shown, so that means just one hydrogen there. The carbon coming off of carbon two must need three hydrogens. Carbon number three already has three bonds around it, so it only has one hydrogen on it. Carbon number four already has four bonds. It has two to carbon three, one up and one to the right, so I don't put any H's on it. Number four must have three hydrogens, so I get up to four bonds, and carbon number five must have three hydrogens, so again, I get up to four bonds. So this is what the Lewis structure would look like of this molecule up here. If you already looked at some functional group stuff, you know that this is an alkene. Um, so that's how I would convert my uh, line bond drawing to a Lewis structure, right? So now here's our Lewis structure. I could do the same thing. I'll do one more example with this one over here on the right. Again, I'll, I'll number these. So I'll, I'll start one, two, three, four, five. And I'm not using IUPAC numbering. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. I'm just picking numbers so I can keep track of things because it's super, super easy for people to lose or gain carbons by accident. So I see that I need five carbons in a row. So all I'm going to do is draw five carbons in a row. And I'm going to keep track again with my numbers. So I know that's my carbon number one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to add all of the necessary pieces. Like I notice that there's a bromine coming off of carbon number two, so I'll add a bromine there. And I notice that carbon number four is double bonded to an oxygen, so I'll add that double bond to an oxygen at carbon number four. And that's all of the extra stuff there, which means now, right, that it must be that all of the other things are hydrogens. So again, I need to fill in the number of hydrogens on carbon number one to get up to four bonds. So three there, one on carbon number two. It looks like I have two on carbon number three. Carbon four already has four bonds, so we're good. And then carbon number five needs three hydrogens on it so that all my carbons have four bonds. And that's what the Lewis structure, again, um, for that molecule would look like. So this is another Lewis structure. But again, you can see how much more work it takes to draw out Lewis structures than just the zigzags. Let's say, for example, though I didn't want to know the Lewis structure. Let's say for this one, I want to know the molecular formula. Let's say I want to know the molecular formula for this molecule, this, this cyclic looking thing. So all I need to do, right, is count my carbons. I'm going to start with my carbons, start with my hydrogens, end with anything else I have. So hydrogen, so carbons, every end and every bend is a carbon, right? So here's an end piece. That's a carbon. That's a carbon. Carbon. So here's all of these bends, right? Every time you bend like that, that's a carbon at that spot. Here's another bend. And then here's an end, which is a carbon, and an end, which is a carbon. So that's all of my carbon pieces, right? Every end and every bend is a carbon in these drawings. So I've got six in the ring, seven up here, 
8, 9, 10. It looks like I have 10 carbons all together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, I have hydrogens on here. They're not drawn out, but again, we just don't draw CHs, so there's probably a bunch of CHs there. And so I do the same thing that I did up above. Uh, this carbon needs one, two, three hydrogens. The carbon below it already has four bonds, so no hydrogens there. There is one there, actually two there. There's two here. Let me erase this a little bit. There is two there. Looks like there's one there because I have three bonds already shown, so just one more hydrogen I need. Two there. Looks like only one there because the three bonds are already drawn. If I go down to this carbon and that little uh, V-shaped tail, I don't need a car. I don't need a hydrogen on that carbon. This carbon on the left needs two hydrogens to get up to four bonds, but the hyd the carbon on the right needs three hydrogens to get up to four bonds. So then I just count them out. It looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. H sixteen. And then I don't have any other um, oxygens or bromines or anything like that. So the molecular formula for this should just be uh, C10H16. And that's it. So when you see a line bond drawing, you should be able to translate it to a Lewis structure, or you should be able to give the molecular formula just by counting the number of carbons, hydrogens, and what other elements there are. So let's try going the other So let's say I want to draw the line bond drawing of these things. Again, all I would do is I would just number the carbons. So one, two, three, four. I've got four carbons in that one. So I'm simply going to just draw a zigzag like that because I know that that is four carbons, right? I have an end, I have a bend, I have another bend, and I have an end. One, two, three, four carbons. And then all I need to do is put on the other things that aren't carbon. So in this one up here, looks like I have some bromine atoms. So I've got a bromine atom com coming off of carbon number one. So I'm just going to draw a line coming off of carbon number one to draw a bromine atom there. And I have a bromine atom coming off of carbon number two, so I'm just going to draw a bromine atom coming off of carbon two. And that's all I need. That's it. And if I make this just all black so that you can see what it would look like just on your paper, we'd have a bromine and a bromine, just like that. And the lines may touch or not touch. Don't stress out about that. And that's what the line bond drawing would look like of this 1,2-dibromobutane. Uh, Again, don't worry about the, the names. <clears throat> if I take a slightly more complicated one, again, I'm, I always number. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Looks like I have four carbons in a row. So again, I'll draw that same basic 4. And I'm going to number them on my little drawing right here. So carbons 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then, I'm, I'm, again, I'm just going to add the extra stuff. So it looks like there's nothing coming off of one other than hydrogens. Don't draw those. But carbon number two has two chlorines coming off of them. So I'm going to draw one chlorine and another one. So I've got one chlorine coming off and another chlorine coming off. And they're both coming off of carbon two, right? So I have them coming off of the same spot. Looks like carbon three has um, a CH3 coming off. It has one carbon coming off of it. So I'm going to draw just a line because I know that's a new end. So that's a new carbon. And then coming off of carbon-4, I have an OH coming off, so I need to draw a line and then an OH. And that should be all of my pieces um, for that line bond drawing. So it looks like in the end I'm going to have something that looks like this. That should be the line bond drawing for that molecule. And we can get double bonds and triple bonds. So let me number this one down here. I have one, two carbons, then an oxygen, then three, four, five, six carbons. So I'll have one, two, that's two carbons right there, just a line, right, because there's two ends, so two carbons. And that carbon number two here, let me just write that, one, two. My carbon number two here, I know is attached to an O, because there's an O right there, and that that O is attached to carbon number three, four, five, and six. three, four, five, and six. Again, I'm just gonna add, so that's my carbon skeleton, my basic skeleton, just the, the straight across. And then I'm gonna add the extra things that I need. Um, I don't see anything coming off of one and two, those are just H's, or three and four. It looks like the only other interesting thing is that I have a triple bond at five and six. So I'm just gonna add two more lines between five and six to show a triple bond. And again, if I go uh, to the black pen, then you just get something that looks like this.
Um, you can draw a kink here. It's probably going to be fine for most people. Technically, it's linear, so you'll see it drawn out. But that's still supposed to be carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then lastly, we'll do a ring 1 because rings throw people for a loop. Uh, I'm just going to start somewhere, anywhere. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have a 5-membered ring. And let's make our just so we so to draw a line bond drawing, we just draw a five membered ring. You just draw a pentagon. And that's supposed to be your five. You write your carbons one, two, three, four, five. And it looks like I have a double bond between one and two. Right, there's my double bond between one and two, and I have one carbon coming off of carbon number three. So I need, just need to draw one carbon coming off of carbon number three. And so now uh, it looks like I have a pentagon with a double bond and an extra line. And so that would be the line bond drawing of that molecule. That's really all there is to it. Um, it looks easier to watch someone else do it than to do it yourself. So again, like always, I recommend that you practice, practice, practice. Definitely number your carbons so you keep track of everything. You don't lose things. Um, and that's how you draw. Uh, that's how you do line bond drawings of organic molecules. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Happy studying.